Sometimes having a lot of control is great. Scents like serum, pigments, face plant, and vital allow you to sculpt a patch exactly as you like. But what about when you just want instant inspiration? Well, you might think presets and your favorite synth are the best option, but sometimes that's not what you want either. You still feel like you want to be involved in the sound design process. Enter Sign Plant. Now, I'm just going to say, I'm not sure if it's Sin Plant or Sign Plant, but I think it's Sign Plant. I've been saying Sin Plant my whole life. Anyway, now there's no other synth like this quite like it on the market. And in fact, it was Flume's go to synth in the early days, and he used it a lot on his first album. But I feel like over the last few years, it's kind of been forgotten about. So today we're going to dive into this simple yet powerful tool. It's not a sponsored video. I just really like using this into my own music. And I've actually put together a free preset pack called Overgrowth. So if you want to check out the capabilities of this synth instantly, grab that preset pack below for free right now and we'll get into it. So I've got this patch loaded up here with a preset in its default mode. And when you first uh, load up Sign Plant, you'll notice that your attention is drawn to this central control panel here with the notes around this wheel. This is the main part of the synth and it allows you to sculpt the sound in a random and fun way. Now I've just got some MIDI loaded up here with some drums just so you can hear what I'm working on. So what, how this works is this is the default mode. So basically all of the notes are going to sound the exact same. For example, if I click on these notes around the edge here, you'll hear them play. Or if I play them on a, on a keyboard, right? Each one has its own unique sound. So if I actually grab this little seed here, I can click and drag. And the sound will evolve. But this isn't the same for every note. In fact, it's actually random for every note. So if I go to the B note here. You'll hear that B and C sound quite different, and then A sharp. So if I play these notes, each note now sounds different, which is an absolutely crazy sound design possibility because it means you can get more organic random sequences uh, from the notes when you play them on your keyboard. You can actually, uh, if you drag these all back and down into the middle, you can control all of the branches growing out with the mod wheel if you've got a MIDI keyboard, so. Sounds different for each note there. And watch what happens when I play this MIDI and I do that. It sounds sick, but let's say we're playing around with it and we like the sound of one of the things and want to commit to it. Let's say we like this plucky sound. If I actually click this seed in the middle, this will plant the chosen seed, which is the last selected note that I've adjusted. And it will basically make that new sound a starting point. And now I've got my own starting point, which means I can then go ahead and use the mod wheel or drag out the seeds again. And then I can commit to that. You know, and then I, I like that sound. And I could keep doing this sound design process and basically just explore the sonic possibilities that this synth has to offer. Now, if you like, say, a certain modulation, say we've got this F sharp here. And we like that modulation sound, but we want that to apply to the other notes. We can actually go into the menu here and clone the selected branch. The modulation will be the same for all the branches. And this is great for making presets because sometimes that randomness isn't quite what you want, right? Uh, so let's actually bring these all down to minimum so we can actually hear the modulation and then we can Now you hear the modulation is the same for all of the notes. Now you've also got these other controls on the outside. You've got tuning, which is pretty self-explanatory. It goes up in sense, so it's kind of a smooth tuning rather than like stepping up in semitones or octaves. Atonality kind of does something different depending on the patch. It kind of adds a bit of a chorusy detune type effect. We change the patch. See, it does kind of something different there yet again. Let me just turn that up. The effect uh, kind of adds some reverb and stereo image, which is kind of cool. Or you can bring it down to make it fully dry and mono. And then the release is kind of how long the sound decays for at the end once the note is let go of. 
like an ADSR envelope release control. Wheel scaling allows you to control the maximum amount of modulation the wheel will do. So if we bring these all down to minimum again, max wheel scaling will move the branches out to the full position. Uh, and, you know, we can scale that back again. So if we don't like the full uh, breadth of the possibility of the modulation, then we can just scale that back. Velocity sensitivity kind of allows you to be more expressive when playing on a MIDI keyboard. If you like those louder and quieter notes, or you can make it all one velocity, which is great for leads and basses that want a bit more consistency to them. And then you've got a volume control to make it louder or quieter, depending on how loud the synth is. And that is basically the main controls. Now, you've also got this G manipulator, which is an absolutely... Uh, optional part of the synth, which allows you to fine tune the exact specific parts of the sound. Again, this is something I don't use a lot of, but I'm going to get into a few tips in a second. And one of those things I'm going to get into is one of these controls, which I really love to play around with. Now that we've gone over the features in this synth, I want to show you a few creative ways that I like to use sign in my own music and hopefully these inspire you too. So the first thing I like to do is resampling the branch tweaks. Now I've kind of covered at this point, the mod wheel moving the growth of the plants there. <laughs> But I like to actually kind of in real time resample the movements because sometimes you get these magical moments when you're just doodling around with the synth. Sometimes it's just one moment you wish you recorded. And because it's so unpredictable, you can kind of capture them with resampling. So I've got an instance of sign plant. Now I've gone here and just new random C, which basically just generates a preset. And I've got an arpeggiator on this synth in Ableton here just so I can uh, get this cool arp effect. Right. Uh, and I'm just going to go ahead here and turn on the arming for my resampling track and resample some stuff. So I hope you got that. That was just a load of fun. I'm just going to drag out the full resample here and you can kind of hear what's going on. Some really cool moments in here. I love this moment here. Could be used to turn into like kind of a nice impact melodic effect or something with the right, you know, fade out and some reverb and some other processing. But basically go nuts with just resampling what comes out of sign plant and have fun. And also it allows you to commit to the ideas rather than just continually tweaking them in sign plant. So number two is using sign plants tuning and effect controls to create builds. Now, I've loaded up a CS Locust Alert, which one is one of the presets that comes with sign plant by default. And it's this cool kind of like alert, alarm kind of sound. Obviously this will work well for a build up, but it could apply to any sound really, because it's just this matter of using this tuning here and this effect because the reverb in sign plant just sounds incredible. It's just luscious. It's not super chorusy, but it's very, uh, you know, full and pleasant to listen to. Using these two effects, because when you get up to the max, we'll go 100% wet, it just creates tension. So what I would do is just like, let's build a little bit of a MIDI clip in here. I'm gonna just kind of use this quarter note build here. Classic. And let's uh, go into the modulation here. Let's go to the effect here. And I'm just gonna drag in an envelope on the effect. You can do this in any DAW, it doesn't have to be Ableton. And I'm going to do the same on the tuning as well, uh, except the tuning, I'm not going to go from minimum, I'm going to go from the middle. Uh, although I could pitch up the MIDI uh, up or pitch down the MIDI and go from the bottom or whatever. That's pretty low to start with. So let's try it going up. You might want to expand these out and kind of fine tune the envelopes. For example, starting on 100% dry might not be perfect for this sound. Maybe we want to kind of make it a bit more sudden towards the end with the reverb anyway. Or even have a bit more reverb to start with. Uh, and you could, you know, go nuts, make it higher if you wanted to. And like I said, it, this works with any sound, so I can go and change the preset.
uh, each preset's going to have a different reverb setting depending on the G manipulator controls with this effect down the bottom. So don't expect it to sound perfect, uh, but just kind of go along with it and see what you come up with. Speaking of effects, I want to go over back into the G manipulator and show you the power of one of the particular controls, which is the effect size control right at the bottom here, it happens to be the last one, but it's one of the funnest. If I've got this little synth here, kind of a plucky sound. It's got quite a bit of the effect at the moment to really show you what this is capable of. And notice when I play around with this effect size. Like what? It basically just creates these really cool glitchy stuttery effects. And you can kind of, uh, you know, exaggerate this by playing around with the other effects controls, bring up the length, for example. Chorus, uh, the mix. And that's just a really cool control I like to mess around with. Again, you can use this in the resampling and create these really cool glitchy melodic fills and stuff like that. And the last tip here is to actually create your own preset pack. And like I showed you, this synth is just crazy with generating its own sounds. You know, this is just a randomly generated uh, seed here. If I bring that mod wheel back down to minimum. That's something I just generated with this new random seed. And I'm just going to go through and just see if I can come up with a few sounds. <laughs> the cool thing is it even names them for you. So if you struggle to name presets or tracks like a lot of producers, then you can don't even have to worry about that. It just does it for you. That sounds sick. I could go ahead and save that as a patch. Uh, you know, you can it's, it's already there. You can save it in the user patch folder, wherever you want. Create a new folder uh, and then it will show up presets here go new one Ooh. yeah i like that one i'm gonna go ahead and uh save that you can obviously use a better naming convention by using like cs or bs for like chords or bases or ld for lead whatever you want effects that's a good effects one Ooh, if you're like, that sounds like Jai Wolf or something. I feel like we'd use that in one of his tunes. Another like effects, or you could use it as like a nice layer on a synth to add like a bit of noise. A uh, nice kind of random plucky sound. It's Castlevania. Oh, beautiful piano. Get the effects and the release on this one up. And yeah. Look, it's got you a new name there already. And as I mentioned, if you want an example of the sounds and the breadth of sound design possibilities, the even the random generator is capable of, make sure to grab my free sign plant overgrowth preset pack down below in the description. It's got 35 different sounds from leads to effects to bases and everything in between. I hope you enjoyed this different take on the power of sign plant. Hopefully it's a tool you can start using in your own mixes if you're looking for a new synth to inject something different into music. Trust you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.